going to introduce um, Krishan, uh, and Krishan, I apologize, I really apologize for mispronouncing your name, Krishan Srinivasan. Um, and Krishan is the Global Chief Revenue Officer, FSS Technologies, FZE. Um, and Krishan, if I could hand over to you, you have the floor, welcome. Sure, thank you. Uh, good morning, Amit. Uh, just quickly, let me get my presentation up and running. Just one second. Uh, very good morning to all of you. Uh, in fact, uh, I've been listening to the uh, sessions yesterday and today. Very interesting coverage, Amit, and a great uh, uh, moderation. One can't take away the fact that the world is undergoing a churn set in motion by a crisis that could actually bend the arc of history. I never said this. Somebody else said this, but I thought it was a very appropriate quote uh, for what I'm going to be speaking on today, which is about the fundamental construct is technology changes in payments, particularly in retail payments, changes society at a very fundamental level, right? So the narrative today for me is, is going to be on the inevitability, inevitability of you know, the payments that, that are undergoing massive changes today. So I'm going to be very crisp. I'm actually going to talk about you know, how in the context of uh, Saudi, cash loyal society to cashless, challenges, opportunities, and readiness from a retail payments ecosystem perspective, because there are quite a few players uh, that would make this entire uh, ecosystem complete. I want to touch upon five strategic retail payment themes. And then of course, you know, one slide on monetizing and why we believe that FSS is uniquely positioned. So first and foremost is the, the less cash, cash vision of, uh, of KSA. And of course the demographics and enablers. As you can see, this is a no-brainer. This is a condensed version of all the information that is there in their vision document. Essentially, we're talking about a very ambitious target where in the next 10 years, they're talking about 70% of transactions to become cashless, right? So demographics, great demographics. You've got 71% of the adults are under, you know, 71% of the population are under 30 years of age. So that makes it a great segment digital channel penetration, digital literacy. There are targets with reference to how the point of sale to order to move from 0.4 million to 0.6 million in the next uh, three to four years. And then of course, like the telecom sector, there is also this benchmark of ARPU for, uh, for your e-commerce transaction that is also likely to go significantly from 16% of 45% of what is happening with respect to uh, online purchases. What is also happening is that there is a very strong conducive uh, infrastructure in terms of payment infrastructure, internet, uh, mobile connectivity, et cetera, in Saudi. There's a lot of innovation happening. There is this digital literacy. Uh, this is a, a very high percentage of uh, literacy in the space of digital and mind boggling government programs, particularly during these COVID times. All these are levers that will actually enable them to move towards meeting their payment vision for 2030. Now, I would call it as the power of 4S. So when it comes to digital payments in the context of retail, it's very important that what is going to be driving change are these four S's, smart cities, smart customers, smart homes, and smart stores. So when we talk of smart customers, we're talking about young and wealthy. The, we talked about the demographic profile. There is a high digital literacy. They're sophisticated and more importantly, it's all about instant gratification. And the most important of all is convenience. Smart homes, talking of smart homes, it is IoT, then objects and devices that can engage in not just talk, but also try and spend, right? So IoT payments is going to become big time. That's going to be one of those big changes that we would see in the country. Smart stores, scan and pay, multi-lane acquiring, which is again, one of the specialities that we offer from an FSS perspective. EPP and buy now, pay later kind of mechanisms, instant discount, digital lending, all these are there when it comes to smart stores, smart merchants, smart cities. Again, drawing a page from developing countries, smart cities are actually going to propel uh, retail digital payments in terms of uh, you know, consumer to government, government to consumer, collections and payments that hitherto are possibly cash and checks would move towards a digital format what about the chances of having one common card for all practical purposes within that city? With reference to retail payments ecosystem, 
I would say that, you know, we have to be very mindful of what challenges, opportunities are there for the different players in the ecosystem. And, you know, when we talk about an ecosystem for retail payments, there are the merchants, there are the acquirers, there are the issuers. Talking about merchants, their challenges would be considering what's going on today with the world in the world because of the pandemic. How do they, how do they focus on footfall? How can they make it? How can, how can they turn convert their business into making it far more asset like? For example, can the shift happen from a physical pause to an EFT pause or a mobile pause? How can they cater to the omni-channel requirement? Again, it's very very getting popular. The ability for a consumer to do something online, come back and transact in a physical store. Consumers want frictionless payments, frictionless. How can the transaction be made frictionless? What is it that the merchants have to do at their end? Choice of payment methods, more importantly, is the need for immediate settlement. Acquirers, again, when I talk about acquirers and issuance, issuers, banks are also included in that. As we all know that, you know, they're not just banks, there are a lot of other players who can, who can be an acquirer, they can be an issuer. Now, from an acquirer perspective, there is a lot of innovation that is required. And again, you know, there is often neglected segment, which we call as the mass segment in merchants, how to make those long tail profitable, which means that the answer is that we have to necessarily look at the SME segment to make it a worthy proposition. Like CK Prahlad in those days talked about, there is money to be made at the bottom of the pyramid. So SME segment is something, how can they make it profitable? Risk mitigation, and it's always about scale. So acquiring is always about scale. When it comes to issuers, Shrinking revenues because you know eventually we are seeing payments moving away from the card rail to an account rail. So what happens? So they have to constantly know. Today's times, there could be possibilities of higher delinquency. How do we deal with higher delinquency? Easy payment with strong analytics to the consumer or to their customers. How to become top choice and contactless integrations. And speaking of which, one of the strategic payment themes that I intend to talk today is about contactless payments. Then you have the other four ecosystem partners. And this slide is, you know, mostly from a retail uh, payments perspective. Schemes, again, I wouldn't say that schemes are undergoing an existential threat, but obviously they are under pressure because many markets, they want to make sure that they set up their own domestic schemes. So this conflict of domestic versus international, how are they going to deal with it? Pressure on revenues and fees, constant innovation is also required. Similarly, from a processor perspective, which is the industry that we belong to, is that it is no longer a boring back office function. There's a lot of expectation from processors and enterprise grade platform technology companies like ours, how to build scale profitably. Patience is required as the long-term shift towards online and contactless payments. So moving towards a platform-based model and then to be ready on a cloud, off-cloud kind of stuff. Neo banks and then banking avatars. So these are two different flavors. Neo banks ride on a partnership with a bank Banking avatars are those like, for example, a, a digital extension of a traditional bank. So all these are players in the uh, ecosystem and it's very, very important to recognize how they will deal with challenges and kind of address those opportunities. What are the five payment themes that I intend to address very quickly, which is of relevance to, uh, to Saudi? The first one is digitizing mass transit, contactless issuing, long tail merchants with an acquiring perspective, real time payments, and then last but not the least is open banking. We heard a lot about open banking in the context of value added services and payments. And by the way, FSS is a full spectrum player when it comes to all these five strategic teams. Speaking of mass transit, digitizing this means more penetration. Real innovation is here because end of the day, this is very close. These are small value payments, very close to how a citizen or an individual would deal with cash. It feels like cash, but you're actually taking away cash. So if there is innovation happening with all these seven metro rails coming up, we believe that digitizing mass transit can actually play a, a lead role in achieving the 2030 vision. Micro ticket size, potential to, and this by large from an issuer perspective has the potential to become the largest prepaid, quite frankly, anything to do with mass transit. So converging different schemes, if there are different cities and different metros, how do you converge those different schemes? So, and what it's required is from a perspective that your it has any card should have both a debit card systems needs to be upgraded so that it also has the the prepaid feature in functionality into those cards. The second strategic theme is contactless payments. Roughly about 40-45 percent 
I believe are already uh, in, in KSA from the perspective are contactless. These are low touch, no touch kind of uh, payments. Then what the basic requirements are, it has to be simple, seamless, secure, and intuitive. And when I say simple, seamless, secure, and intuitive, the number one priority is convenience for people like you and I. So convenience, as long as we talk about convenience, security, how do you make sure that the transactions are secure, risk-free, superior payment experience, all these help in the growth of contactless payments. And we believe that this is a big opportunity from an issuance standpoint. Long tail merchants, I always say that these are the overlooked category because traditionally the acquirers or the aggregators will always look for the large merchants. However, like many countries, including India and in Saudi and in many other developing countries and in G20 countries, the fundamental drivers for economy are these SME segments. So how do we make sure that we bring this SME segment as part of your entire digital ecosystem, payments ecosystem, right? So traditionally, historically, banks have always been averse to extending credit. So they face funding challenges. How do you enable them to make sure that they are part of the acceptance journey? Government has a lot of programs in Saudi, deferred payments, point of sale related incentives. They've taken away fee transfer between banks. There's a lot that is already happening. However, there is a need to drive the strategic team by way of how we can make sure that acquirers can participate, get more SMEs online and get them onto this digital bandwagon from a payment perspective, remove the barriers to integrity. What is the need out here? The real need out here is to make sure that the banks are able to offer acquiring as a platform or a service. In other words, processes like us can actually play a very important role in that journey. That's why this is a continuation of the previous slide that how do we make money from a long tail merchants perspective is this program called Embark, where we believe that this is an end to end acquiring where we're talking about getting the SME onto the payment bandwagon. So it is about building a very strong acceptance infrastructure, which means that, you know, this SME segment is also a very important segment. Last but not the least, uh, the, the fourth uh, strategic theme is this faster payments initiative. Faster payments is about uh, making sure that you know it's moving away from a card rail to an account rail. So this is the reference architecture that you see on the slide that we believe is very important from driving the agenda for payments. And the India UPI ex is experience is a trendsetter. We were able to articulate the different payment flows and the powerful user journeys. So Saudi is already doing something. 60 countries globally are looking at payment transformation on from a real time faster payments initiative. Fortunately for FSS, we have a very compelling provision at a central level, at the national level, and also at a PSP level, at the, at the beneficiary bank level. Open banking, we've heard a lot about open banking. This one slide talks about the third party providers. Um, you know, I'm not uh, bel belittling the, the discussions that has happened on open banking since yesterday. However, what is of relevance from, a, from an FSS standpoint is payment initiation service, open banking. How are we doing it? So open banking as a service, as a third party provider, that has the connectivity out there, that's the reason where that's the play that FSS has. So what do we monetize? Essentially, digital enablement accelerators and enablers, we feel that there are a lot of changes happening in all these six sectors. So whether it is open banking, digital commerce, voice commerce, immediate payment and settlements, uh, securities and analytics. When we talk of payments, there is a very strong need to make sure that security is addressed. And then fundamental to all that is analytics. Payment analytics is also going to be a lead indicator for serving different customer aspirations. Retail payments landscape. This is where we operate right from the spectrum, issuance to payments processing, merchant acquiring, talk about Offline, online, point of sale, uh, or you know, card not present, which is your payment gateway, digital security. We talked about digital banking, smart back office, reconciliation, analytics, a very strong area. And then we talk about payment processing. So what is FSS trying to do? FSS is a full spectrum payment technology player. It's not just as a licensed platform, license as a solution. We also offer it as a platform. We have processing payments. And the good news is that we are already working with customers in Saudi. We have a payment gateway customer. That bank is a payment gateway customer. 
The Saudi Payments is implementing the uh, terminal management system from FSS. And we are also partnering with a fintechs out there to offer prepay as in conjunction in partnership with banks. So net net, we are an end-to-end -end provider. Companies like FSS can actually complement the, the journey of uh, KSA in that 2030 vision. Thank you so much. Christian, thank you. Very, very interesting. It's actually lots of information to process. We've had, we had a few, uh, looks like we've got some questions coming through, but um, I think just due to time, let's, let's, we'll, we'll collect those questions. If you could join okay. the, 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 the big Q&A session at the end, we'll, we'll collect those. We can maybe share them with you before as well. So you've so you got an idea, but wow, lots, wow, lots of information, actually a very relevant topic here in the UK as well. Um, so yeah, that, that's fantastic. Thank you very much. Really interesting. Great insight. Thank you. Um, thank you, thank you Christian. Thank, thank you. you.